either. Don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. And Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Anybody feel like that way? Lord, whatever you're doing, I want to be a part of it. Whatever's going on, God, I want to, whatever you're doing, God, if you're healing, if you're healing in this season, don't do it without me. God, if you're lifting hearts in this season, don't do it without me. If you're encouraging souls, God, encourage mine. So I praise the Lord tonight for each one of you. We thank God. I'm glad to be saved and sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. And I honor the Lord for all of you all now. Of course, Lady Simpkins, Elder Lambert, glory to God to all the other elders and ministers online. Mr. Shandy, I see you. I was just kind of looking to see other names. But glad to see the old Mary's back from glory to God vacation. Hallelujah. Hope they enjoyed themselves. And in fact, I'm sure they did. Glory to God. Uh, we praise God for you and for all of the saints of God that are online tonight. Uh, I want you to know how, how grateful I am for what God is doing at the Rock. Glory to God. This Sunday, this Sunday will be first Sunday, and we've got a number of things going on. It's been a while since we had this kind of activity. Glory to God. We'll be ordaining deacons and deaconess and giving the right hand of fellowship and all of those things taking place on first Sunday. I'm, I'm just as excited as can be. I'm just as great. Somebody, yeah, thank you, sister. Uh, Missionary Ivory, thank you for clapping your hands. I wish somebody else would put, put up some hands and clap. Thank God for what he's doing because he's including you uh, in the miracles. He's considering where you are. Glory to God. He, he knows you need to be encouraged and he just wants to do that for you. And I'm so grateful for the goodness of the Lord. I'm getting ready, getting ready for that. We're getting ready for the Holy Convocation. And uh, I want to encourage all of you all to, uh, glory to God, adjust your schedule so you can be a part of the Holy Convocation for NorCal Metropolitan. It is uh, going to absolutely be a revival all week long. And uh, we're looking for the law to move and to save some and fill some with the Holy Ghost to deliver some, glory to God. Um, and I'm just excited about what God is doing. Amen. Grateful for what he's done this past week. Enjoy those that minister. Glory to God at the rock. Amen. Really enjoyed them. Uh, missionary Edwards at eight o'clock and then uh, Sister Jessica at 1130 and missionary uh, Edmondson. Both of them did fantastic. And then uh, those that participated in the service, whether it was greeting or uh, praying or reading the scripture or Amen. Singing the songs. Glory to God. God has been good to us. Amen. I said, God has been good to us. Amen. Glory to God. He's been good to us. Amen. He's been good to us. Uh, and so I just wanted to just acknowledge that and uh, thank him for being so mindful of my heart. Glory to God. You ought to be able to tell him that too. Lord, thank you for being mindful of my heart. You, you know where I am. You, you know what, what I struggle with. You, you know what's difficult for me to accept. And so thank you for being mindful of my heart. Glory to God. Well, tonight we're getting ready to go into Bible study. We have just come out of a wonderful series, Glory to God, where we dealt with the uh, solid steps for saints, and then we did solid steps for leaders. And then we, Glory to God, we've had some classes for deacons and deaconess, Glory to God, and uh, the Lord blessed us, amen. So tonight we're going to hear uh, from Elder Lambert, and he's our assistant pastor. He's going to be teaching tonight, uh, and uh, I want to encourage everybody to open your hearts and mind. Get your Bible, get your Bible, get your Bible, glory to God. Whatever we're talking about, find that word in your Bible, amen? Uh, you, you, if you find it in your Bible, if you need it next week, you'll know where to go. If you need it six months from now, you know you've already been to that scripture and you know what to use it on. Amen. So uh, without any further ado, come on, we're receiving Elder Kevin Lambert as he comes tonight with the Bible study. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. God bless you, uh, Pastor and Saints of God. It is an honor and a privilege uh, to be here this morning or this evening. I'm so used to doing things on the morning that uh, evening kind of catches me off guard. 
but I, I, I really appreciate this opportunity. Uh, the Lord has been dealing with me uh, concerning fasting, um, not just because I was given this opportunity, but it's something that um, Deacon Burnett uh, reminded me of uh, a few months ago, uh, six, eight months ago, about how important it is to fast and, and the reasons we should fast. And I've been struggling with, you know, doing that. And I had uh, some questions I needed to ask myself about fasting. And those are the kind of things that we're going to kind of cover today. So before I go any further, um, I do want to give honor to our pastor, to our first lady, to all the deacons and elders, and to all the household of faith. Uh, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we say thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to yet another day of life, another opportunity to line up to your will, another opportunity to learn more about you, therefore discovering more about ourselves, another opportunity to feel your loving embrace, another opportunity to experience your grace, your mercy, and your tender love for us, another opportunity just to celebrate who you are, for you are the author and the finisher of our faith. We say thank you. Now, God, as we continue in this study, we ask that you illuminate your word today, God, that you open up our hearts, our minds, and our understanding that we might see and hear from you. And God, not only practice what we do, but God, make it a lifestyle of what we do. Let your word become rhema, living word, that it might spread to those that are in our household, those that are in our communities, and to the world at large. For your word is infectious. It is a pandemic that has gone rampant. God help us to spread this disease to all who don't know you. And that disease is love. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. So I'm gonna try to put this up here uh, a little bit. And for those of you who um, kind of understand uh, or been around me any length of time, understand that my teaching style is more of a call and response. Um, I'm not really um, a lecturer. But today, uh, because of the uh, importance and the sensitivity of this particular uh, lesson, I'm going to spend a little bit more time in, in lecture, and then we're going to kind of open it up uh, towards the end, because I want to lay this foundation down, because fasting is one of those things that we struggle with. Um, a lot of new members and a lot of old timers, we kind of struggle with, do we fast? And what's the purpose of it? Is it necessary? You know, oh, he's calling another three day fast. Why? You know, we, we struggle with this. What's the purpose of it? You know, what does it do for us? And uh, so I, I really want to lay that foundation out um, today. Uh, and then we'll uh, we'll open it up for for comments. Um, give me one second to to share this. Uh, I want to make sure I'm sharing the right one. Where'd it go? Here it is. Uh, can everybody see that? If you can see it, uh, Pastor, yes. give me a thumbs up. Yes, we can. All right, thank you. Is that missionary Rick Maiden? Okay. All right. Is that a little easier to see now? Okay. That's good. So why should we fast? Uh, this question is always asked, and why do we have why do we have to fast? How uh, how will fasting benefit me? Uh, the question uh, to this, uh, the answer to this question we will often hear is something like um, to get closer to God or to deny the flesh. These are good answers, but it does not tell the whole story. These can, these can't be, oh, I'm, I'm figuring me for that, answers that, uh, the, this can be answer, this can be uh, answers. This can be the kind of answers that will leave new believers, and forgive me for that typo, new believers, and uh, our, uh, leave our new believers or skeptics room uh, to either fast for the wrong reasons 
or not to fast at all. In this lesson, we will explore the reasons and the benefits of fasting. There are many reasons for us to fast. In this lesson, we will look at just about four of them. When should we fast? When leaders ask us to. When we need answers from God. When we need help and or deliverance from sin. For power to overcome the desires of the flesh. Now, these are some, just a few of the reasons why we really need to fast. Fasting is the activator, accelerator, supercharger of our prayers. A lot of us don't realize that fasting is the, is the, that, 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 uh, I remember back in our day when you had a, a, an engine and you would turbocharge it or, and it would make that engine light up and run faster or, or those guys that used to race cars they, they drop that uh, nitro inside of their gas tank and gives them that well that's what fasting does fasting is the activator the supercharger for our prayers prayer is a commandment from God fasting is an invitation from God to allow him to work through us what do you mean by that Lambert I was listening to uh, Miles Monroe, and he said something that kind of stuck with me. He said that uh, God is like a 50,000 uh, drum water tank. And in that water tank, it has a little two inch pipe at the bottom to let water out. Although there's 50,000 gallons of water, it can only trickle out the amount of space that's in that little two inch pipe. If you get a bigger pipe, more water can flow through it. Our prayers, God wants to work through our prayers. And when we add fasting to our prayers, it opens up that pipe, makes it larger and unclogs up pipe so God can flow through clearly and smoothly through our lives. And we can affect more people through fasting and prayer. And we're going to see that as we go through this lesson today. We're going to see that there were opportunities that God had through fasting and prayer, how he was able to save nations, how he was able to hold back the attacks of the enemies, how he was able to fight back sin, how he was able to deliver from demons and deliver from illness. All of these things were not just from prayer, but from prayer and fasting, the activator, the supercharger. So why should we why should we fast? Well, fasting by itself is good, but it's without prayer if we miss the mark. Fasting and prayer kind of go hand in not kind of they go hand in hand. Why is that important? Uh, I don't know if you've ever been on a on a on a long fast, but there's something that happens to your body uh, uh, physically as we fast. We have gotten so used to our bodies just of holding all of this food that we get so used to it and we don't realize the effect that just digesting food has on our psyche. Let me say that a different way. Food, in order to digest, especially some of the foods that we eat, in order to digest it, it takes a lot of energy from the body. That's why sometimes after we had that big meal, the first thing we want to do is go to sleep. We don't wore the body out just trying to digest the food, right? Fasting gives us an opportunity naturally to kind of cleanse out that colon to cleanse out uh, those juices and to allow the sugars that are in our body to go ahead and work in the way that they should. Those sugars turn into energy and it gives us a boost. And it's amazing. And I, 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 I'm there's a, a bunch of us on this line that can probably contest, uh, attest to this. The moment someone says fast, 10 seconds later, we hungry. Now, I can work all day and not worry about food. And I'm, I'm pretty sure there's some of us online the same way. We get to work, we get busy doing something, playing basketball, whatever it is that we do at work. And and next thing we look up, it's lunchtime has passed and we're still working and we're not hungry. We're not even dealing about it. We, we'll take something when we get a, when we get an opportunity. But as soon as somebody say fast, we get hungry. The other thing that happens, as soon as they say we're going to fast, everybody want to take you to lunch. 
they had that big Christmas party, you know, now all of a sudden somebody brought some pizza into the office and, you know, somebody wants to celebrate just at the moment that we call the fast. And now your body and your mind is at war with each other. Your body is saying, come on, man, you know who you want to eat. You can, you can, you can eat, man. Come on, homie. You know, your body kind of body slams you. Your mind just body slams you and said, no, we're going to eat. But you're saying in your soul, no, I need to fast. I need to fast. And now we have that struggle. Here's something about fasting that we often uh, overlook. There is a reason for fasting that we, we miss. See, our fasting shouldn't be a chore. Let me say this a different way. Sometimes we look at fasting, oh, I, I got to labor through this fast. And how much more time I got? Oh, sweat. You know, got nine more hours before it's over. And we're looking at how long it's going to take for the fast to be over. How long before I can get a drink of water? How long before I can put a carrot in my mouth? How long is it going to be? Your body starts to act funny on you. You know, you get cranky, you know, get headache. Oh, I'm, I can't make it because my head is hurt. No, oh, my God, let me let me do this. Oh, you know, how are we going to get it? You know, oh, we got four more hours. How can I make it? Well, when we add prayer and we understand that fasting is an invitation from God to get closer to him, it's amazing that on the second day of the fast, your mind and body changes. There's a surge of energy. I don't know where it comes from, God. I was going to say, I don't know where it comes from, but it comes from the spirit of God. There's a surge of energy, and that takes place for two reasons. One, your body is clean which means your mind is clean, which means now God has more room to pour into you. So when you add prayer to your fasting, prayer and meditating and reading God's word, you have something to fall back on when those urges come and you want those urges because they remind you why you're fasting. Why am I fasting? To get closer to God. Why am I fasting? We need a reason for fasting, a reason. You know, I want to fast because I want to know more from God. I'm, I'm, I'm fasting because I want my kids saved. I'm, I'm fasting because I want to hear what God has for my life. I'm fasting because I, I want sister so-and-so to get healed. I want brother so-and-so to be healed. I'm fasting because I want to overcome this addiction. We have a reason for our fast. And as long as we have a reason for our fast, we're not worried about the clock. So when that hunger pain hits us, so why am I fasting? Well, oh, I'm fasting because I have a, a mission. I have something that I'm seeking from God. Now, God is not a dispenser. He, he's not an ATM, but God is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. He is a rewarder of those that seek hard after him. He is uh, waiting for us to allow him to work through us so that we can bless others through our lives. I'm going to say that again. When you think about how you came to Christ, nine times out of 10, it was from watching someone else's life, someone praying for you, someone uh, spending time with you, someone that you can look at and say, what is different about that individual? Well, that was God working through that individual's life to get your attention. God needs us and he wants us, so he invites us to join in to fasting. And when we change the way that we view fasting, when we look at fasting not as a challenge, but as a reminder of a mission that he has given us, reminds us that hunger pain reminds us of why we're fasting. We're not fasting just because the pastor called to fast. We're fasting because we have a desire, a goal that needs to be met. Fasting is an important aspect of our Christian walk. Prayer is our communication mechanism. And fasting is our supercharger. So now I, I just want to look at a couple of things. When should we fast? When leaders uh, ask us to. I want to look at this verse of scripture real quick. And I, I'm, 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 I'm trying to hold on to my myself here. Uh, can I get a, a reader? Somebody read that scripture. Uh, uh, first uh, Thessalonians 5, uh, 15 through 18. Can I get somebody to read that for me? Yeah. 
Yeah, come on, sis, Sister Hunter. Um, I don't have access to allow you to speak. No worries. First Thessalonians 5.15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So there is a commandment that we pray, right? There, there's a, a, God is requiring us to pray. That is our communication. That is how we open up that door to, to hear what God has to say for us. And fasting keeps our mind clear so that we can receive and hear from God. Somebody uh, go to um, Philippians 4. And I believe it started around verse number three. Could somebody get that? Philippians four. Start around verse number three. I have it. Uh, Elder. Are you go, ready? Go, yeah, go right ahead. It says, and I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, Help those women which labor with me in the gospel. That's Philippians yeah, 4. Yeah, keep going. Okay. With Clement also and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Let's stop right there. See how God is using people? Just in that verse, he's using folks. He says, listen, I, I, want, I want to commend you. I want to entreat you. I, I got some fellow workers here. I got some other folks that love God, some other folks that are praying, some other folks that are fasting. Now go ahead and, and, and read four, uh, verse number four. Rejoice. Read, in the read down through verse number, uh, number seven. Yes, sir. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now Amen. look at that. Look at that. That speaks volumes. That says that first, we are a community of believers that work together. Mm -hmm. Then it says that, listen, anything that you need, ask God for it, right? He said supplication. He's, he's asking us, he's saying, listen, prayer is essential, but fasting is the activator. For those of us who are struggling with the concept of fasting, I'm hoping by the end of this, we can kind of clear some of that up. Our fasting should be for a reason, for a purpose, so that when we are fasting, we have something that we can go back to. Some of us have jobs we hate, but we go there because we get a paycheck. Fasting is, if we look at fasting as there is a reason for our fasting and there's a payoff at the end. Fasting is important. Prayer is essential. Thank you, my brother. When leaders call a fast, there are several uh, occasions where church leaders will call fast. Uh, they, they will call a fast to uh, if there is um, uh, some challenges that are going on in the church. Uh, they would call a fast just to unify uh, the saints, to get saints, get their minds clear, get their hearts clear, get them in a, a, a focused area. Uh, a focused mindset, you know, because when you're fasting, one of the things that happen, all of this other stuff don't matter no more. You, you know, you don't care about bills. You All you care about is your stomach grumbling. And if you don't have a reason to fall back on a reminder that when my stomach grumbles is I have a reason I'm fasting because we have a goal that needs to be met. Now that fasting becomes more important. It doesn't become so much of a chore, but it becomes a challenge of the mind, heart, and spirit. Fasting also puts the body in check. It puts that flesh in check. It says, flesh, I don't care. You, you, you're going to be all right. There's a blessing coming at the end of this. You're going to feel better, flesh. 
You're going to be better flesh. You're going to smell better flesh. And we're going to behave better flesh. Why? Because you're now under the control of the spirit of the living God. You're no longer controlled by every wind and doctrine. You're no longer controlled by that, that uh, uh, reptilian mind that just does whatever it wants to do at a drop of a hat, feeding all of its impulses. Uh, no, fasting says, stop. You don't run this thing. My body is the temple of the living God. I'm ruled and controlled by the Holy Ghost. And fasting helps us to dial, to dial into that. God has given us that invitation to get closer to him and to see how he's going to work miracles through our life through prayer and fasting. Somebody go ahead and read that, that scripture. Uh, Second Chronicles um, 20 uh, and 2 through 4. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, there cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazontamal, which is in Jedi. Now see, there was an attack getting ready to come. And these folks came and said, hey, Jehoshaphat, these multitudes getting ready to come. He called a fast and got the people together. And at the end of the fast, at the end of all that, they didn't even have to worry about the battle no more. God had already taken care of it. Why? Because God had put us together collectively. There are some challenges that we're having in our church. There are some challenges that we're having in our homes and in our communities that through prayer and fasting, we can overcome those challenges. Why? Because we would open up the floodgates and allow God to operate through us as individuals and as imagine all of us with a five inch pipe just pouring out God's blessings. This world will be changed. You will see uh, as, you, as you read the Bible, you'll see time after time after time when they fasted, things changed, hearts changed, situations changed through prayer and through fasting. When we need answers from God, fasting is an opportunity for us to get answers from God. God wants to answer our problems. He wants to answer our questions. And sometimes we're so confused and so stuffed up with all this other stuff that we have going on in our minds and our bodies that we can't hear from God. Fasting and prayer gets us to a place where we can just settle our nerves, where we can just sit back. And we don't have to worry about a whole lot of stuff now. God has our complete attention and he has ours and we have his. Fasting allows us to get to that place and, and if nothing else, fasting will make you pray. Lord, get me through this. Lord, help me through this. Am I speaking to anybody? You know, Lord, prayer and fasting, God will answer questions through fasting. Somebody go ahead and read that scripture. Uh, Second Samuel uh, 12. Oh, Lambert, yes. Before we go on to the next scripture, I wanted to go back to where you were. This is one of my favorite verses of Bible episodes in the Bible with Jehoshaphat. You said when leaders call fasting and Jehoshaphat in a very difficult time. And in fact, their, their, the life, his life and the life of his country was on the line because the enemy was were much too great for him much too great for the, what they had as a resource or an ability to fight the enemy. But as a leader, he set himself to pray and uh, called on the Lord and called everybody to a fast. And God came through with deliverance. And just like you said, we fast uh, and we ought to have a purpose in mind or a request before the Lord. There ought, we, there ought to be, we fast for with purpose. And so I enjoy what you said. And that's a tremendous scripture for everybody to kind of go back and read. It's really, really powerful. I'm sorry, thank you for that time. No, well, thank you. Uh, you, you know me, Pastor, I'm usually a call and response. So I'm glad you broke that rhythm. <laughs> so if there's any more <laughs> questions or comments thus far, uh, what chime in, what have you heard so far? Uh, anybody? I'll get on a roll again, and it'll be nine o'clock before I'm done. How, how much time do I have, Pastor? You got plenty of time, my brother. Okay. Sister Spalding, raise your hand. Go ahead, sis. The, the part that resonated I just, was fasting is an invitation from God to get close to Him. 
And that really touched my heart that it's him inviting us to get close to him and spending that intimate time with him. Thank you, sis. Sister Spalding? Yes, I just wanted to say what came to mind is when Esther called a fast yes. to save her people from annihilation. She had a purpose to call the fast. And she told all the Jews to fast with her, and they got the outcome. She was able to save her people through fasting and prayer. Absolutely. And then that almost made it into my notes. So thank you, sis. <laughs> Can I say one more thing, Elder? No, uh, no, Sister not you, Beverly, Pastor. <laughs> Sister Devlin is going to say something. But on, back on that, uh, on that Second Chronicles, it was interesting that the leader called everybody. Yes, everybody. And when everybody came, there was such power in this power in our unity. And we're all with one accord seeking the Lord. You know, the Bible says, if any two of you shall agree as touching anything you ask, and if any two or three shall gather in my name, I'll be in the midst. So can you imagine when the whole uh, nation got together and began to call on the name of the Lord, pushed the plate back and brought the prayer in and sought the Lord with everything, and God defeated their enemy for me, for them. Glory to God. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, there's other scriptures that say they even brought in people that weren't saved <laughs> to come in and join into the fast. Some folks that were just in the outskirts of the city. Come on in. We're going to all fast. Why? Because everybody was suffering from the same uh, situation, even though even when we were going through the pandemic, rich, poor, ugly, cute. All of us were affected by that, and it caused a lot of folks to either come to uh, come to a agreement with, with God or to run further away. And I thank God that it called me to run closer to him. Um, somebody want to read that? Uh, um, Sister Beverly has her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sister Beverly. Um, it just reminded me of what we were just studying in Sunday school as well. When Absolutely. Ezra, when Ezra um, called a fast. You know, he had gone before the king and, you know, was boasting on his God and, you know, and all that. And then he's like, you know, he couldn't go to the king and ask for no protection because you got your God. So what he said is he got the people, like you said, all of them together. They all came of one accord. And the reason for the fast is for to pro the protection again against the enemy. There were so many people out there that, were, that wanted to stop them. But it just that just reminded me, it just reinforces it, and God, God confirms his word and repeats his word over again. So for just to hear that again, it just reminded me of that. And um, and there truly is a blessing when you come together in unity. And that's what Pastor's been talking to us about recently. That's why we've been on a fast on Tuesday and Friday, because he wanted us to be united, because together we're stronger. Thank you for letting me share. Hey, man, I appreciate that. And I'm hey, glad. Uh, go ahead. Um, Elder, really quickly, um, I just want to go back to both Ezra and Jehoshaphat and something that you said earlier when you were talking about having that reason to fast in both of these situations, specifically Jehoshaphat, they fasted, but then the war was won in their praise. And Absolutely. so that for me, that the war was won in their praise. And so while they're, they're hungry, right? They're hangry, which I typed in there, but they had a purpose for fasting. And so because they had a purpose for fasting, not only did they win the war in their praise for both Ezra and Jehoshaphat, it was the praise with that one accord and all the musicians and the whole band and everybody praising with one accord, they broke their fast with praise. And Absolutely. when you do that, you think, oh, I'm hangry and I'm weak and I'm all this. But how did they do all that praise and an instrument pray? It takes a lot to blow them trumpets. That's a whole lot of, but you're hungry. And so that just shows the power of God when you fast, that he inhabits you, that now this is the, the temple of the Holy Ghost. God begins to use that temple. And when you're fasting for a purpose and that breakthrough comes, you forget all about food and water and all of the things. And it is your praise that nourishes you. And that's for this Jehoshaphat and Ezra. Again, Sister Beverly and I um, were studying and teaching Bible study 
But in both of those, what got me was it was the praise that won the war. It was the praise that won the protection. God inhabits the praises of his people. And so I just wanted to throw that out there. I'm, I'm a praiser. Amen. Amen. You in the right church. <laughs> yeah, anyone else? All right. You know, um, back to Ezra, because um, I'm glad, you know, I wasn't trying to spend a lot of time there, but I'm, I'm glad we're there. Here's the other thing. People were out of place. The preachers weren't in the sanctuary. <laughs> they out there doing their thing. So when he called them all together, he, he went and first got all of those that should have been in leadership. And that's what we're doing now. Everyone that should be in leadership come together. And along with that, the congregation came too. So it is important for us to fast. And fasting should not be, oh, here we go again. How many more hours do I have? A three-day fast. No, you have three days. You have a three-day invitation to hang out with Jesus. And when we frame it that way, we have three days to get some prayers answered. We have three days to hear from God. We have three days to feel the presence of God in your body. Uh, just like your body, as it, it when it starts to deplete itself of, 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 of substance or food, it starts using the fat that's in your body, and it turns that fat into energy. It starts using the sugar that's in your body. It turns, turns that into energy, and all of those things work. Well, the same thing with our spiritual fast. It takes all of those things that have been molded and mildewed and just hanging around doing nothing. It turns those things into energy. And now we have the energy to praise God. Now we have the energy to worship God. Now we have the energy to testify about God's glory and goodness. Somebody go ahead and read this scripture so we can get down the road. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped up right about now. Uh, let me see some thumbs up. Y'all getting this? Uh, I'm used to having people in my presence where I can see them. Okay, I see Pastor. You know, thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Somebody go ahead and read uh, uh, 2 Samuel, because this is an important one that I want us to get. Second Samuel 16? Yeah, 12 and 16. David, therefore, besought God for the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. Keep going? Yeah. 17, and the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth, but he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. Yeah, go on and down to 20. Yeah, keep going. Read down to verse 20. Okay. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died, and the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, behold. While the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? But when David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore, David said unto his servants, is the child dead? And they said, he is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel and came into the house of the Lord and worshiped. Then he came to his own house and when he required, they set bread before him and he did eat, bless the Lord. So let's look at that. There are times in our lives when we need answers from God. Fasting prepares us for God's answer. The answer is not always going to be easy, but through prayer and fasting, he gives us the strength to endure whatever it is. David had a hard thing going on in his life. Loss of a child is devastating, but his response through prayer and fasting was to wash himself, to anoint himself, and to go into the house of God and to do what? Worship. Worship. Because God through fasting, prepares us for the answer because the answer is not always going to be in our favor. 
but it will be for our good. Let me say that again. The answer might not always be in our favor. It may not always be what we want, but it will work together for our good because that's how God has designed it. We need fasting. It is the activator, the supercharger that helps our prayers get answered, that gives us the ability to endure hard answers from God. It is the power to move where God has asked us to move in some difficult areas. Sometimes God will send us to some places that are hard for us to go. Sometimes we have to dig back in our past and deal with stuff in our past through fasting and prayer. He will give us the strength to endure and to come out a winner, come out a winner, and come out a worshiper. When we need, uh, when we need help, somebody go ahead and read that next piece. For before I go any further, any questions or comments on that verse of scripture? Elder Lambert, I was raising my hand. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I can't yeah, see it. So no, you're all right. I'm glad you said that right at the right time. You know, I was thinking about that. Not only should we fast. Uh, and pray glory to God, but we also ought to read God's word in Absolutely. with our fast uh, so that uh, we are hearing from the Lord because the word of the Lord is, is God's word indeed uh, to us. And if we align those things up, glory to God, uh, it might be that we're fasting for purpose. We're fasting for strength. We're fasting that uh, our family members be saved. We're fasting for healing, glory to God. We're fasting for unity in the body of Christ. But because we've united with God in spirit, glory to God, our souls are connected with the Lord. Uh, there might be some other things that come up afterwards. Absolutely. Unknown at this point, but you are strengthened because you've been in the, pres in the presence of God. You've been in God's will and now you're strengthened. And so, yeah, it prepares you. And that, that's, that, that's interesting. This is an interesting. I hadn't thought about this thing with David in that sense that it was preparing for whatever God said. He was he was ready. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyone else? OK. When we need help in deliverance from sin. Somebody go ahead and read. Uh, uh, that's Jonah three, six through nine. The word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth and satin ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles saying, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. Well, that was the same thing. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? Now, it's interesting here. The story of Nineveh, this Jonah, his story is, is he did not want to talk to these folks. These folks didn't have anything to do with God. They, they, were, they were tearing up the, uh, the Jewish people. They were tearing up God's folks. And uh, Jonah was asked to go preach to them. And Jonah did everything he could, went and jumped on a ship, tried to go the opposite direction and all of this stuff. And you see how when one man, life can affect a whole nation, even though this man tried to run from God, the people that was persecuting the, uh, the, uh, the Hebrews knew enough. <laughs> I, I, this, this is exciting to me. Jonah didn't want to, but did what God asked him to do. And God saved the nation, took some people that was totally against them and had them cry out 
in his name. Oh, y'all ain't catching that. Through that, God softened his heart and saved that nation, saved those people. Later on, what happened, what happened. But for that time, the king got all of the Ninevites to sit down in sackcloth and ashes and ask God for forgiveness. Through prayer and fasting, God's heart is pricked. His heart is pricked and his forgiveness is activated. He is allowed to work freely through people now. Prayer and fasting opens up the floodgates. And as pastor said, reading God's word, that's the bread of heaven. That's the manna. That's the daily bread that we need. And when you add that into God's word, into prayer and fasting, what you have now is a message from on high. And it feeds you, sustains you, and protects you all in one nutshell. God requires us to pray and invites us to fast. Fasting it should always be a part of a believer's life. We should never go without fasting. It has natural applic uh, applications, it has mental applications, and it has spiritual implications. Somebody read this next part for me. Uh, for the power, uh, God, uh, through prayer and fasting, gives us the power to overcome our des the desires of our flesh. This is a very familiar scripture. Uh, somebody read that for me, uh, Second Chronicles. Uh, how am I doing for time, Pastor? Sorry, you're doing great, brother. You got another. You got another ten minutes or so. Okay, good. This should this should wrap it up right here, then. Somebody, go ahead and read that for me. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. Yeah, seven fourteen through people, sixteen. Yeah. If my Can people, you... which are called by my name, yes. shall humble themselves and pray. Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be opened and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever. And mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Sunday school. Yes, it is. <laughs> Absolutely, Pastor. And any thoughts or comments about that? Before, before I open that up, the word here, humble, actually means to fast. Let me say that again. To humble in this text means to sustain, to fast. Now, I had to correct myself when I was doing this study. Because I said, oh, yeah, you know, I can fast from basketball. No, fasting has to do with covering your mouth. I can sustain from playing basketball. But fasting is sustaining from feeding my mouth. It's covering my mouth. And there are scriptures that says when you fast, don't do like the hypocrites with your face all messed up. You say, Keep yourself clean. Don't let nobody know you're fasting. It ain't their business. I'm not fasting to prove to you that I can go through a three-day consecration, that I can go through uh, three days of, of not eating and drinking. No, 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 no. Uh, we don't want to look like, uh, like the world's beating us up as we go. No, we should be rejoicing. We should be breath should be okay. Everything should look, look normal as normal as it can possibly be. Now, for those of us who are on medication, I, I need to put this out there, this preamble out there. You have to consult God, consult your, uh, your physicians and do what is right for you. If you have high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, kidney disease, whatever it is, we know that God is a healer. We know that God is a deliverer. But we also know that God has given us these things to help sustain us. So ask God, consult your physician, and whatever God say, that's what you do. 
Is that all right? Now, I'm not giving nobody mouth to mouth. So do what God has asked you to do and you'll be all right. All right. Uh, somebody go ahead and uh, and read that scripture for me. Uh, we already did that. Uh, any comments on that scripture? It says, humble yourself and pray. Anything, anybody, any hands up? Well, I mean, um, it's, again, like you said, it's a, it's a, a familiar scripture. And, you know, and I, don't, and I always read these things and I wonder if I'm just, you know, even on the subject that we're talking about when I read them. And I'm just looking at it and saying how, how simple it sounds, but I guess as people, maybe not as saints at our church, but as people in general, how difficult it is for us to, to do these things. Now, as men and women of God, we work, uh, we're diligent daily. Uh, attempting to humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways. But we just turn around and look at the world and it's like, wow. There's people who know the, know the word and they don't care nothing about this. No, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Brother Clinsdale. See, the Bible is not written to y'all. The Bible's written to me. So I can only concern myself with God is saying to me. I can't worry about, and that's why prayer and fasting is so important because it keeps me focused on what's important. And that's my relationship with God. And when that gets right, when you look at the world, you would see the world in a different light. Through my Christian walk, I've seen the world, I've seen people in the world when I first got saved and I was dealing with coming into Christ and I was dealing with uh, uh, this new this new walk, you know, I wasn't completely in and, I, and I'm still going to nightclubs and stuff like that. And I remember standing in the nightclub and I saw people, you know how you see those movies where people's heads all distorted and they got long faces and mouth open, they look like demons. I saw people like that. Now I see people's pain not their demons. I see that I'm, I'm riding down the street and somebody shoots by me. I automatically don't fuss at them. Lord, bless him. Uh, people that I see as, as I'm walking down the street, Lord, bless that individual. I see people differently now. I don't see them like I used to see them. Why? Because my focus is on the love letter that God wrote to me. And Deacon Hooker quoted that scripture. He said, follow peace with all men. Without such, no man shall see God. Those are the things that when we look at fasting and prayer, it turns us inward so that now when we look outwardly, we see the people as God sees them, not as our pain sees them. So if somebody is not walking in the word of God, we just need to pray for them. Ain't no need in worrying about, you know, you falling. If you look at them long enough, you're going to stumble and say, well, if they ain't doing, never mind. Y'all got it. Any, any, any other comments? All right, this is the last one, then we're out of here. The power to cast out demons. Somebody read that for me. Matthew 17, uh, 14 through 15. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed, for oft times he falls into the fire and oft times into the water. He needs to go up. Thank you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast out the devil? 
And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth out, but by prayer and fasting. That's Deacon Burnett's favorite scripture. <laughs> yeah, any comments? Thank you, Pastor. What what can you glean from Missionary that? Missionary Rick Maiden's his hands up. God bless you, uh, Elder. This is a powerful lesson. Uh, two things. Is it possible that we can get a copy of this lesson with the scriptures? And secondly, I really admired um, what you were saying about fasting. I hear a lot of people talk about how they fast from TV or they fast from this activity or fast from that activity. But fasting has nothing to do with fasting from activities per se, but it's all about the covering of our mouth. I love how you brought that out. Amen. I just wanted to share that. Yeah, I, I lived that truth for a long time. And, and um, just doing this lesson kind of opened my eyes to, to Lambert, you had it wrong. <laughs> wow, that's powerful. Anyone else? Thank you, sis. I also wanted to add, like, this lesson has really um, helped me um, and opened my eyes to the true meaning of fasting. I had not heard before the humble in that specific um, scripture meant fasting or meant to cover your mouth. Um, and one of the scriptures that I've been um reading and just meditating on as Lord set guard to my lips. And I mean, I was preaching in my head all the way home about setting guard to my lips, watching what you say. And if you can't watch what you say, then you're closing your mouth, you're, you're fasting, right? And so I'm like, man, you're closing your mouth. So nothing goes in and nothing comes out. And by nothing, me means nothing. Mm. So earlier when I looked at, um, when you, we read the scripture and it said, but in everything mm -hmm. by prayer and supplication, it said everything. And so when I'm fasting, my mouth is covered. And for me, if I'm asking the Lord to set guard to my lips, that that then creates a fast for me because there is something that I'm working on or something that I need to hear from God from, which was exactly tonight. And so as that was going through my mind, tonight is what I needed to help facilitate my study. Fasting is a conduit to me studying and hearing from the Lord. And so thank you for putting this together. And I there were a lot of highlights here for me. Oh, praise God. Thank you for that, sis. Anyone else? And we're Sister closing. Barbara, hand is raised. Sister Barbara? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Elder Limber. Uh, I enjoy your, uh, your lesson, fasting. You brought out so many high points, uh, food for thought of why we fast. And it's such a, a, a common question and, and and sometimes it's just simple things that you know we assume that this is why we fast. And when you when you said fasting is an invitation from God to allow Him to work through us, I thought that was that was awesome. And you talked about praying, fasting, meditating, and reading God's word. Um, you know, you are seeking something from God. And um, the other thing that I, I you know, I, I really hadn't thought about fasting prepares us for God's answer. I never really thought about that. Um, you know, in fasting, you know, we, we're preparing ourselves for his answer. And as you said, it might not always be in our favor, but it will, it will but it will be for our, for our good. And God will prepare and strengthen us for that answer. So I thank you for your, your lesson uh, this evening. Well, thank you, sis. Anyone else? Brother Klingsko? Yes, uh, Elder Lambert, uh, awesome lesson. 
And I really just want to thank you for literally, you know, educating me on uh, what fasting is and what it entails. Um, I've never, other than last week, uh, I think if I'm correct, it was last Tuesday, Wednesday was like the first time that I ever, you know, even tried or called myself fasting. And um, I just noticed that whatever it was that I'd done, the one thing that I know that I did right is it immediately caused me to focus on God and my relationship with him. Um, like I said, I had to take my medicine and I had to eat something with it. But short of that, from six to six, when I said to myself, I'm going to fast and I'm going to focus on the Lord, and I did that, it made me, it drew me closer to him. And just your le lesson tonight kind of just brought home a lot of things that maybe I wasn't so sure about in mm -hmm. terms of fasting and how important it is because I, you know, I guess over the years, even since I've been saved, I've been kind of convincing myself, well, how really important is not eating. You know, we have to eat. What's going to happen to us if we don't eat? What's going to happen to us if we don't drink? God wants us to do that. He wants to take care of us. You know, all of those things were going through my head, mm -hmm. you know, even up to that point. But thank you for driving some of the stuff home. And this is that, you know, just deny the part about denying the flesh is the part that hit home. Is and so just thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, I have a better understanding of what it entails because yeah. of the well, praise God, man. Thank you for that, for that transparency. Um, you know, and and one of the things that that's so important is 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 this thing about medication. Uh, in in my research, you know, my my studies, uh, I came across this, uh, and the person said, "Listen, there are some of us that need to take our medication," and he said, "But that doesn't mean you sit down and have a full meal." <laughs> You, know, you just take what you need. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, uh, I've seen my wife, you know, she, she has to take some medication that she can't take on an empty stomach. So she just gets a little piece of bread, right? So it's not like I have to take this medication. So I have to have a full meal. Just cut down on the size of the meal, you know, cut down, uh, acknowledge uh, God in that, in that way. Because sometimes we use these things as an excuse not to fast. And so it's so important. Um, and I'm wrapping it up. I'm going to get this back into the hands of the pastor. And I uh, just want to make sure that we close it out correctly. Um, so why uh, the reasons that we fast uh, when leadership asked us to, when we need answers from God, when we need help or deliverance from sin, and for power to overcome our desires, uh, overcome the desires of our flesh. Fasting is an invitation to get closer to God. Prayer is a commandment from God. And those are the key things that we need to keep in mind. And somebody's at my door. Um, so, and fasting is the accelerant, the supercharger for our prayers. It opens up the conduit so that God can work through us, for us, so that the community at large can be saved. Fasting is an important aspect of a Christian's life. And I'm done, Pastor. Thank you so much, Elder Lambert. Come on, you all, put some hands and hearts up. Clap your hands. Glory to God. You can remove this from the screen, Elder Lambert. Glory to God. Um, so we praise God for each one of you all. Thank you all. Are there any questions, any comments, any concerns, any questions? Uh, this is a lesson. Uh, fasting so it brings on a lot of questions. Why do you do that? That's for the that's for the the Bible days. We don't need to fast anymore. And you hear all of that. I see a missionary or Mary. Your hand is up. Um, Elder Lambert thoroughly um, enjoyed the lesson, and from what I've heard tonight, fasting takes us out of ourselves because we don't know whose blessing we're holding. Or what have you? It 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 kills the biases. Like, oh, I don't want to go and and tell her or tell 
them that because we may have some issues or what have you. I might be holding up my sister's blessing or my brother's blessing. So fasting will kill that. And so, and sometimes it's not that we fast for ourselves before, you know, that we can be used of God, that God could use us without any issues that we might be having. So Elder Lambert, um, I thank you for the lesson. It was really good. And yeah, we may be in this thing a long time, but we could always get something out of it. And I got a lot out of it tonight. So I really enjoyed um, the lesson on tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I just realized my camera wasn't on. I, just, I didn't mean that. Praise God. <laughs> All right. We was looking at a little radio, radio, radio thing, one of those. Uh, <laughs> I kept looking at that. Who was that? <laughs> uh, but thank you so much. Lady Simpkins, you had your hand up? Yes, sir. I was just wondering, is it possible for us all to get a copy of this lesson? Is it going to be put online or can we get it or what? I we're going to get that out to you all. I just, uh, while we're, this was going on, I uh, connected with uh, Missionary, Missionary Hunter and we will make sure that that gets out to everybody between today and tomorrow. As soon as Elder Lambert sends it to us, we'll get it. Sister, you want me to put it in the chat window? No, um, I want you no, to send it to us first. Okay. Email it to me, okay. Elder, and then I'll get it in a version because.